What's good, my Rags of Fitness people, my Rags of Fitness folks, my Rags of Fitness fam? It's your man Rags back off up in this thing. And when I tell you I'm off up in it, I'm talking about I'm knee deep all the way off up in it. To all my people that's on that weight loss journey, man, keep your head up, keep pushing, keep striving for greatness. For all my Alabama people that's coming back, all of my Alabama people that's here for the first time, Roll Tide. Can I get a Roll Tide? Roll Tide, Roll Tide. Hey, y'all, please be sure to uh to like the video, comment, subscribe. Please watch the video all the way through if you can. This is just Rags coming through with a little bit of breaking news. This happened about 60 minutes, about an hour ago. Alabama Crimson Tide has flipped commit. Caden Proctor from Iowa to Alabama. Now this is an offensive tackle, young guy that's got the opportunity to come in and make a good impression on Nick Saban in Alabama and maybe get a good starting position or even just play, you know, a little bit more than a normal freshman might. <clears throat> Let's look at this right here. The number one ranked offensive tackle, Caden Proctor, announced his flip from and intentions to sign with Alabama early Wednesday morning. During the ceremony at Des Moines, Iowa South Park Polk High School. This guy right here, man, this former Iowa commit, man, he's 6'7", 300 pounds. He considered Oregon. He really considered Oregon going to Oregon, but guess what? Hey, man, you chose the best. You really did. Let's look here. I got a few things. Uh, I was reading a few articles. Let's see. They say, let me see. See, we was already ranked number one. This guy here really take us over the top, man. Hold on, man. This camera keep trying to focus in on me. <clears throat> he was all, Alabama already had a number one uh, recruiting class. And with this guy coming in, man, it takes us over the top, man. Over the top. That's some good news, man. Hey. This is words right here from Caden Park. Just going in there and having that opportunity to start right away. I have to compete for it, but it's a good chance I start right away for national championship, contending team and winning games, and having fun and being the best that I can be playing against the best in, day in and day out. That seems like a lot of guys ain't doing that. They ain't willing to do that right now. To be the best and play against the best, day in and day out. These guys are leaving and going to find other opportunities that, that just don't even really make sense, don't really look good, if you ask me. Um, this is going to be a pretty good get right here. They say that Proctor built a strong connection with Freddie Roach and Eric Wolfer. So that's a good good recruiting tandem right there, man. That's what we got on the – those are our recruiting guys. He said that I love that I'm not an outlier in the rankings. I don't know what he means by that, but you ain't got to worry about being an outlier, dog. You five-star, Caden Proctor. You coming in. We need your help. Just do what you got to do, big dog. You going to pancake. That's all you got to worry about doing. Just pancake. <laughs> no sex allowed, baby. That's what I'm saying, man. Dynasty. That's what we looking for. Dynasty. Let's see what they say. He is the full five-star commit to commit to Alabama, joining the nation's number one safety, top-ranked pass rusher. Wait, the number one safety is Caleb Downs. The top-ranked pass rusher, Keon Keeley, and running back, Justin Hayes. We got five-star at the five-star at the five-star, baby. Let's go. This class right here is really looking good. It's almost like, uh, you know, you get you get get rid of some more people, man. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. Some of that stuff that we that you know didn't want to be with us anymore, they left, went to their team. They're gonna contribute. So that's what we got on that end, man. We still waiting on uh the recruit. What's that guy's name? The, the duo from Montgomery, I think. Uh, what's their name? Uh, Quay Rushaw and James Smith. We still waiting on those guys. Defensive lineman is James Smith and the edge rusher is Quay Russo. Man, 
boy, we got Quay Russo, we got we got Keon Keely, man, that thing could get nasty. Them young boys can come in flying around. You already got my boy, uh, my boy Dallas Turner on one end. You know what I'm saying? He, he can get in there and, and they can fall under his tutelage. You feel me? <laughs> they can fall up under his guidance. He gonna teach them what to do. Man, we got, man, it's not over with, Bama. Hey, I want y'all to lift your heads up. I know at first we was all down. We had the 13 guys and all that that was going into the transfer portal. Man, keep your head up, Bama. We still, we still the creme de la creme. We still the creme de la creme. We flipped that guy, man. We flipped him big time. We got some more news here. James Brockmeyer. I think he ended up... <clears throat> James Brockmeyer ended up choosing TCU. He's a Texas guy. I think his dad was a uh, uh, an actual Texas Longhorn uh, uh, player. So I thought he was made a, went over there to be a legacy player, but he's going to TCU. TCU is a hot team right now in Texas, man. So uh, it is what it is. I'm looking for the article to see that guy. James Brockman, there he is. He announced his transfer destination. Tommy, not James Brockmeyer. James Brockmeyer is still on the team. That's his brother. Uh, Tommy Brockmeyer is the guy that uh, chose TCU. So, yep. He was a former five-star. Brockmeyer did not see the field in his first year in Tuscaloosa, which was plagued by minor injuries. So, he was an injured. You know, he was injured and stuff, man. If he, if he would have gave it a chance and would have just stuck with it, you know what I'm saying? He would have he would have did good. I believe he would have did good. I believe this would have been his year coming up right here with uh with uh uh Javon Cohen and, and 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 uh even Amari Kite left. Uh the few guys that left. This would have been his year. He he would have been next man up, I really do believe. Cause from what I saw when he was recruited, I remember him coming in, him and his brother. He was a nasty guy. He was a mauler, man. I remember seeing him on 247. Um, shout out to 247, by the way. I remember seeing him on different highlights and stuff, man. That guy was a mauler, brawler. You know, I like that. I like that in that guy. So, Jaden Proctor, I mean, I keep calling him Jaden. Caden Proctor coming to Alabama, man. That's a big deal. Uh, what I say about that, man, I will usually get a pretty good offensive lineman, man. And uh, for him to choose to, uh, they have a good, pretty good pedigree over there when it comes to offensive lineman. For him to choose to uh, lead that pedigree, and, and like I say, no knocks to Iowa. The Hawkeyes, man, <clears throat> they always have that little thing about them, a little grit about them, especially when it comes to those offensive linemen. But for him to lead there and come to Alabama, man, and get some of this championship pedigree in him, I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, going to championships, whether it's a SEC championship or a national championship, I believe we will be there next year. Now, it's going to be tough. Um, <clears throat> one thing I say about the SEC West is it's a lot of competition there. Now, like I say, not I'm not going to SEC East, but SEC West, it's a lot of competition there. And even with the big name coaches that's coming in now, I mean, at the top, you got Nick Saban. You know what I'm saying? You got, um, you got, um, uh, Lane Kiffin, you got Hugh Freeze now. We had Mike Leach. You see how Mike Leach take teams, or how he took teams from being mediocre to kind of going over the hump. He was that guy. He he inherited teams that was normally not as good as other teams in the Power Five, and he made them Power Five-ish, if you get what I'm saying. Um, we're going to miss that guy, man. I, I like Mike Leach, to be honest with you, even though he was a rival for us. Not really a rival, just a, 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 um, a contender, a competitor, great coach, man. Uh, I'm going to miss him. I, 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 liked, I liked him, you know. <clears throat> I liked the way he played Lane Kiffin year in and year out. You know what I'm saying? Um, who else you got? You got Jimbo Fisher, which you know they say bad things about Jimbo Fisher, but Jimbo Fisher has been that box office coach. He has won championships. A championship, put it like that. Um, you know, once he when he had good players and stuff. Who else? Um, uh, Kelly, you got Kelly down there with uh, with uh, LSU. I mean, the L, the, if you you can't name another conference that got that 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 notable name, the notoriety name at coach, the way the SEC uh, West does, man. And um, 
A lot of those guys have track records of being winners. You know, whether they won a national championship or a conference championship or not, they have transformed teams. They make their teams competitive. So, man, um, <clears throat> the SEC West, man, we're there. Florida lost their bowl game to Oregon State 30-3, man. Come on, man. Now, we got to do better than that. I always said, you know, I'm not going to be that guy, especially this year, that's going to scream SEC because the SEC wasn't screaming for us when we needed them to get into the uh, – to the uh, playoffs, but I do still have a thing for the SEC. I won't be screaming SEC when the playoff games come, but with the bowl games, yes, I am screaming SEC. Um, so that's pretty much all I got to say on the subject. You know, I'm gonna be hollering back at y'all already.